So today what we're going to look at is how to develop Power Builder applications in 64-bit. Now a couple things need to be clarified here. First of all, uh, the only way you're going to do this, at least at the time this video is recorded, is with PowerBuilder.net. Uh, this, this feature isn't currently available in PowerBuilder Classic. Also, you have to be on PowerBuilder.net version 12.5, Maintenance Release 1. The feature was added in Maintenance Release 1, so if you're using 12.5 uh, uh, out of the box, you won't see this capability. You'll have to get the maintenance uh, release to, to get that capability. The other thing I want to note is that when we say we're developing for 64-bit, we're actually doing something a little bit different. Um, with .NET, you actually have a choice of four platforms you can target. You can target uh, x86, which means 32-bit, uh, and so if the application is running on a 32-bit machine, it runs 32-bit. If it runs on a 64-bit machine, it still runs 32-bit. There's Itanium, there's x64, so that means it runs as 64-bit. That means it has to be running on a 64-bit machine. It can't run on a 32-bit machine. Well, there's a fourth option. It's called any CPU. That means uh, if it's on a 32-bit machine, it can run in a 32-bit mode. Or if it's on a 64-bit machine, it will run in 64-bit mode. Uh, so what Power Builder actually does is it gives you a choice of two of these targets, either x86, so it runs in 32-bit mode only, or any CPU so that uh, you have a choice of running either in 32 or 64 bit depending on the operating system you're running on. So let's go ahead and look, look to see what that looks like. So let's bring over Power Builder and uh, I've created uh, a sample of uh, the three different target types that we really care about. Uh, the .NET Assembly, the .NET WCF web service, and the um, WPF app. So if we go ahead and look in a project for the WPF app, what we're going to see is that there's this new section here. This is platform target. And what I've done for this little sample app is I've actually created two projects here, one that's set up for 32-bit and one that's set up for the 32 or 64-bit, essentially the any CPU target. Uh, what this app does is fairly simple. It's going to uh, connect to a database and uh, retrieve employee data. I've also got a little info button here that checks the, the uh, is 64-bit process property on the uh, system environment uh, .NET uh, class to determine whether it's running in 64 or 32-bit mode. And we'll get to this button here a little bit later. Now, if we're going to connect to the database, one of the first things we're going to have to deal with is the fact that uh, um, depending on which environment we're in, uh, we're either going to be calling it uh, uh, a 32 or 64-bit driver uh, when we make our database connection. And the first, and what I'll point out here is if you have not started using ADO.NET with your .NET applications and PowerBuilder.NET, you really need to, particularly when you get to the any, C, any uh, CPU, because the native drivers are are out the door, out the, uh, you know, unsupported in a WPF application uh, when we when we go into any CPU mode. Uh, you have to use an ADO.NET driver. Now to make this simple, what I've done is I've gone ahead and used um, the system.data.odbc driver. That is one of the uh, um, uh, ADO.NET drivers that you can use when you're using ADO.NET. And, and the reason that makes that simple is because then you can just use an ODBC profile. Um, what there actually are on, a, if you're on a 64-bit system, is there's actually two ODBC administrators. There's one called um, ODBC Data Source Administrator, and it'll say 32-bit behind it. So it looks like this. You go to your system DSN. Here's the uh, profile that was created automatically by PowerBuilder, uh, which is 32-bit. Uh, but there's another one, and I can't bring them up at the same time because the minute you you bring up one, it 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 will just it will when you click on the other one, it will just bring, it'll just leave you on that same one. So I close that. Bring up this one. Looks an awful lot like the same, but you go to the system DSN, and you notice there's some different um, database profiles here. And I actually added this one. Um, it, it does has all the same settings as um, as the standard 32-bit uh, ODC profile. I've added the 64-bit behind it just to make it a little bit clearer that this is actually a 64-bit ODBC profile. It's actually stored in a different section of the registry. 
So when this application is running in 32-bit mode, it's going to use the 32-bit ODBC profile under, uh, within the ADO.NET. And when it's running 64-bit mode, it's going to use the 64-bit uh, version. In fact, we'll go ahead and look at the code and see that what I'm doing is when I, I populating SQL CA, when I get to the point where I want to populate the DB PARM, I actually check to see whether, whether we're running in 32 or 60-bit 64-bit mode. And depending on which one we're running in, then I you I asso associate it to the uh, either 32 or 64-bit ODBC profile. So um, let's just take a look at, and that's actually the only only difference between these two projects is just that one setting. So if we go ahead and run this, let me run the 32-bit version first. It comes up. I hit retrieve, it retrieves, connects to the database, retrieves the data. I hit my info and it says, sure enough, you are running in a 32-bit mode. But let's go ahead, since I am on uh, on Windows 7 64-bit here, I'll just go ahead and run this guy. And, you know, it, it basically it's the same app, but uh, because it was compiled in, in any CPO mode and I'm on 64-bit Windows, it's retrieving the data, but this is now a 64-bit process. Um, so that's that's pretty much all there is to it um, as far as uh, compiling uh, for 64-bit in a WPF app. Now WCF for service and assembly are a little bit different. If you bring up the pr the the uh, project here for an assembly, you notice we don't you see debug and release. You don't see anything that allows us to select the bitness of this compile, and that's because for uh, WCF services and for assemblies, I can show you here the, in the uh, in WCF service as well. Notice debug release, but there's no option for the bitness. Well, that's because uh, what assemblies and and web services aren't themselves executables. They're they're assemblies that get called by another process. And so what Parbler does is it creates these as any CPU by default. And what will determine their bitness at runtime is what executable, what the bitness of the executable was that called them. And that's what we're going to uh, look at here. So, the, and this uh, end cust custom on visual uh, is really complicated. All it does is actually just checks to see what uh, whether we're a 32 or 64-bit process and returns that. And that's actually the same thing I'm using here in this service. So the service only has one method that tells me what mode it's operating in. But let's look at the assembly first. So we have an assembly. Um, it is called assembly.dll that all it does is tells us what mode we're operating in and this is where it gets that that extra button that was on this WPF app. I've added that as a reference to this application and then in the window in this button I've just checked called the the method on that assembly to ask it what mode it thinks it's running in. So if we go ahead and run this guy again we'll run the 32-bit version So this is the 32-bit version. So the app is running in 32-bit mode, and we ask the assembly, and the assembly says, yes, I'm, I'm running in 32-bit mode. Let's run the 64-bit version. So it's running as the 64-bit executable, executable now. So it's running 64-bit mode. We'll ask the assembly what it's doing. It's running 64-bit mode. So that, that's how that works. Um, the assembly doesn't have any bitness of its own, so to speak. It it just takes on the bitness of the of the uh, executable that was uh, that's calling it. We'll look at the WCF service. Does the same thing. Um, we've just got this this uh, uh, OF info that's just going to tell us what mode it's operating in. Now, um, when you run this, you usually run this WCF service host. That is a 64-bit executable. So when I go ahead and run this, okay, and what I've done here is I've created a SOAP UI project that I'm just going to go ahead and use to call that. So that's running 64-bit mode, and so this is my little client that's going to go ahead and call it and just find out what mode it's, it's it thinks it's running in. And sure enough, it says it's a 64-bit process. Well. What are you, you know, how are we going to test this thing out with the 32-bit? Well, there's a, there, one little tweak you can do here. You can take any executable that's in 64-bit mode, that's a 64-bit executable, and you actually run this utility on it called core flags. 
pass the, the, the command arguments 32-bit uh, plus and force and it will actually convert that 64-bit executable into a 32-bit executable. And that's what I've done. I've actually done it on a copy of that um, that uh, project. I'll just pull it up here real quick. See I made a copy. There's the debug folder that the, uh, ex this is the original executable. It runs in 64-bit mode. This is the copy I made. I ran core flags on wcfserviceservice-host.exe. So that's now a 32-bit uh, process. I just need to make sure that this guy's shut down. Because it's the same web service. I can't have it running in, in twice. So I shut that one down. I launched this one. Okay, this is the 32-bit uh, version of that uh, of that service. I'm going to go back to SOAP UI. I'm going to call up the one that does calls the same service. The whistle is a little bit different, and that's why I have uh, uh, two different projects for it. And so I'll go ahead and run that. And Okay, well, let's do this. Let's refresh. Update the definition. Okay, let's run it again. Something got a little whacked there. There we go. Yeah, it's running as a 32-bit process. So that that shows you it was the same. It was the same uh, executable each time. Um, one running under the the normal WCF service host, which is 64-bit. One running under a version that converted to 32-bit running core flags, and uh, as you can see, it uh, it became a 32-bit application. Uh, what it was called from a 32-bit process. Uh, what you do when you actually deploy your WCF service, uh, if you want to run in 32-bit mode, um, there are there are actually some settings on when you deploy to IIS. Um, it will be deployed into uh, an application pool, and the application pool determines the, the bitness of the uh, running web service. Uh, there's a there's an attribute it defaults on a 30 uh, 64 bit system. It defaults to 64 bit, but there's some settings you can tweak on the uh, application pool to make the application pool 32 bit. So that's pretty much it. Um, uh, WCF service assembly. Uh, they're pretty much uh, bitness unaware and take on the uh, the bitness of the the uh, service the executable that calls them and then you then your uh, WPF application which you can compile either as 32-bit or as any CPU. I hope you enjoyed that.